Hi there, I'm Rachel from Treehouse Knits. I have gotten a few questions from some of you about how I do the heels in my toe up two at a time afterthought heels, socks. And so I thought I would take a stab at making a little video tutorial here, hopefully a quick one, on how I cut my sock and insert a heel. Why do I like this method of sock making? I've been making socks for a few years now and I've tried a lot of different ways. I find that when I knit socks, it's a time where I really don't wanna to have to think about a pattern. I just wanna take it and go in the carpool lane, waiting for kids to get out of sports, doctor's offices, that kind of thing. So I love the fact that I can at home just kind of start the toe and then this is all just plain stockinette knitting that I do when I have a few minutes to spare here or there. I love to do the toe at a, uh, two at a time toe up because I really like um, to be done with both at the same time and I also like to do toe up because I, I really like the fact that I can try on my sock a little bit easier to make sure it's big enough in the foot and I have more control over how much yarn I'm using um, if I want to use up an entire skein and make a longer sock. If I've split them up into two even skeins from the beginning when I'm doing toe up two at a time, I just keep going until I have just enough yarn left to bind off and to knit the heel of a sock. I find that if I have about 12 grams left, on a 100, 100 gram skein of sock yarn, I will have enough to knit both the heels. Just things you learn over time. Um, what I have done is a series of videos, just a few that I'm putting all in this one video, that show first how I bind off, the stretchy bind off that I use, and then it shows how I um, just go ahead and cut open a row and then insert and knit the heel. I hope that these are helpful. So now we'll go to Rachel of the past and watch those videos and I'll meet you at the other end. So when I first started knitting socks, my very first pair of toe up, two at a time, I got to the cuff and I went ahead and just did a standard bind off. I then tried to put the socks on and realized quickly that that bind off was not going to work. I could not even get it over my heel. And in fact, while I was trying to get it over my heel, I broke the, the yarn <laughs> and had to undo it and come up with a different idea. And since then, the fa my favorite stretch, stretchy bind off that I've discovered is this. So I've, I've done it around the top of my sock already. It does create a bit of a flare, but that flare goes away when you're wearing it, and it, it goes away when I block my sock or wash my sock for the first time, so it doesn't bother me. So all I do is I've already got a knit stitch. I knit the first stitch, and I go ahead and I knit the second stitch. So now I have two stitches that have been worked on my right needle. I then take my left needle tip and insert it in the front legs of both the stitches. I go ahead and knit through the back loop and off. Now I have one stitch on my right needle. I go ahead and knit a second stitch and I do the same procedure again, inserting that left tip into the front two legs of the two work stitches, knit through the back and off. I'm going to continue doing that to the end and then I'll show you the little trick that I do at the end. So I just go ahead and have my two stitches, insert, knit, off, knit, insert and you see how if you use your index finger and your thumb you can pull down and really open up those two stitches so you can insert it easily and knit through the back loop. Now the other common thing I see when people bind off their socks is they get to the end. Here's my last loop. They have one stitch left. They cut their yarn insert it through, but then it creates this gap right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it always has a jagged end. To not have that jagged end, what I've learned somewhere, I don't remember where, is I just pick 
the next stitch, I go through the legs of that, that first bound off stitch, I pick up a stitch, and that essentially connects the, the end and the beginning, and then I do a standard bind off of bringing that over. I then find that when I cut my yarn and pull it through that loop, it joins the end of the bind off and the beginning together, and I think you can see that there. So that is how I bind off my toe up socks. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you is once I've knit my sock tubes, how do I insert the heel? Now I learned how to do this a few, maybe a year or two ago from a, a YouTube person called Kirby Werby. I'm sure that is not her real name. But if you uh, search on YouTube Kirby Werby Afterthought Heel, uh, you will find the video that I watched. Now since I watched that video, I've also found some tips and tricks that I want to share with you as well that make life a little easier when you're doing this. So the way I typically knit my socks is toe up two at a time and here you can see I've knit um, just plain stockinette and then I've knit a two by two ribbing for the cuff. Ideally I like to knit about to 10 inches and then I knit my cuff and I knit the cuff anywhere from two to four inches depending on how much yarn I have and you know just basically my mood. Sometimes you get sick of knitting two by two and you think that's just fine. So we've gone ahead and you've seen how I bind off for the top of my cuff. And then what I do is I take my ruler and I know that my feet, if I start at eight inches and I measure up, that's where I'm going to insert my heel. And that will be um, the perfect spot for the perfect fit. So I go ahead and do that and I'll flip it over and I get myself one of these stitch markers that you can open and close. I really like this pear-shaped kind. Uh, I think a company called Bryson makes them. It's just a really small needle, those plastic, a uh, small stitch marker. Those plastic ones are a little bit bigger. You can use those, and I did use those in the beginning, and they worked okay, but I really prefer these. And then I just pick one stitch. It doesn't really matter if it's the right or left leg of the stitch, and you can see if you pull hard, you want to make sure you get that stitch marker through the entire stitch and you don't break through the plies. That's important. That'll make picking out that uh, row of stitches a lot easier. So I go ahead and I do that for both of my stitches right away and uh, both of my socks right away, and you see I've done that. If you're doing this for the first time, I highly recommend using a stripe pair of socks to do toe up two at a time, because the stripe really helps you follow the row for the next step of the process. These are stripey, but kind of not. I had to be a little careful in this area because you can see where the color changes in the rows. So the next thing that I do is I look at where, what row that stitch is that I've um, marked, and I go one row up and I pick up the right leg. And you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Just be consistent. If you start picking up the right leg of each stitch across the row, continue to do that. If you don't, um, if you're not consistent, then it's a little more challenging when you need to reorient to your stitches when you start knitting. But I just go ahead and I pick up half the number of stitches that comprises of one round. So I believe these socks I did um, 68 stitches, so I'll be picking up 34 stitches. And you can see how I just kind of manipulate the sock as I'm going along. And one tip is I then, I knit these socks using a size one needle. I'm using a size zero needle to pick up the stitches. It just works so much easier. So I'm gonna to get to the end. I'm not gonna count, I'm just, and to be honest, nowadays I don't really count. I just fold my sock in half and just pick up what I think is the right number because I've learned, eh, one or two stitches doesn't really matter. Okay, so I'm almost to the end. And the first time you do this, it's a little fiddly, but you can see after a few pairs of socks, it goes really fast. So there I've picked up the row above the stitch that I've picked out. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is pull your smaller needle through so the cord is in that row only. 
and you want to continue pulling that needle out, flip your sock around, and find the row now that's on the other side of that stitch. And I think it's there. I'm going to just go ahead and start picking up those across the way. Sorry if I'm a little off here, the camera. Okay, so, and it's really easy to start picking up from the row below, which I think I just did. So I'm gonna just work back to where I was, where I know I'm right, and continue. Now, if we hadn't pulled this cord through, and we'd still have the needle in there, it's just really hard to pick up stitches. So I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna meet you at the okay. end. Okay, so now you can see that I have both the row above and the row below my stitch marker caught, or I picked the stitches on those two rows. And I've went ahead and I've pulled the needle so that there's just cord inside the sock. So the next step is to and this is the fun part, is to cut that little stitch and begin picking out that row. Since you've secured both the, the row above and the row below, your stitches are not going to go anywhere. Now, the first time you do this, it can be a little tedious, and you might be, oh, this is a little challenging, but if you've picked up the rows, you can go ahead and really stretch it out and begin to see Using that needle, I just go ahead and pick the arm, or the, the leg, I should say, of the stitches in that row. Now, every sock knitter has, you can see, that's a big loop there, but that's okay. That'll, you pull on it and it's just fine. Okay, so every sock knitter has at one point been frustrated with around the heel of the sock getting hole or the I'm sorry the yeah the heel of the sock getting a hole in the corners where they're picking up stitches when they um, do a heel gusset and even afterthought heels can be it can be a little challenging to not get the hole. Well, Kirby Werby, that video I referred to earlier, has a brilliant solution to that, and I've found that I never get a hole anymore. So as you're picking that row out, when you get to the end, don't pick completely to the end. And I'll show you, of course I'm... <laughs> having a little bit of a challenge there, but just go slow, take your time. Again, use that smaller needle, make sure you have good lighting, you're well rested, and you're not in a major hurry. But as you can see, I think this is so much easier than when you put waste yarn in there as you're knitting your sock. I think it's just so much easier to pick out stitches versus trying to get waste yarn loops on. So now I'm coming to, here's one, two, three stitches left. I'm gonna take that leg out and that leg out. I'm gonna leave those two stitches unpicked. Now this is where I tuck in my yarn just so it kind of gets out of the way. You're gonna weave that in at the end. I flip it around and I go ahead and I pick out stitches all the way to two before the end. Now, when I have that done, I will come back and show you how to finish the heel. So now what I've done is I have cut out that row after I inserted my smaller size needle and I've left two stitches unpicked out on both ends. What I also like to do is just stick some sort of progress keeper or stitch marker on one of the sides, and I always pick the side where my two needles are in the neutral position, ready to start knitting in the round, so I know that that is my beginning of the round. Sometimes when I pick out stitches, I find that my needles 
are in the neutral position this way, then I put my stitch marker there so I know that's the beginning of my round. I then take, I make sure, first of all, that my yarn is ready to go. You can see I like to do the two at a time, and I've got my two skeins of yarn, two cakes of yarn in there, and I've made sure that they are lined up so that my heels are also identical. And you just go ahead and you begin knitting. It helps if you pull that back needle out so that it's looser. And we just go ahead with our bigger needle. We're going to knit right onto there the first round. I have found after trial and error that if I knit four full rounds before I begin the decreases for my afterthought heel, that gives me the perfect size heel. And I'll just kind of get us started here. And one thing that you want to check is your stitch orientation. It's hard to tell on the first two stitches, but you can tell right away after the second stitch if you have oriented the stitches correctly, meaning when you picked through, when you picked the row above and below, you picked the right leg. Now, in my case, I did pick the correct leg. That was the right leg. Now, if you would pick the left leg, I'll reorient this stitch. It's going to look like this, with the back leg going to the right. And it's very hard to insert your needle and knit it in there. You'll feel it. All you need to do to reorient that is knit through the back loop, and that reorients. Or you can put it, shift it back onto your needle, but it's easier just to knit through the back loop on that entire row. That's why you want to be consistent when you're picking up your stitches. So that's all you do, and I do that for four rounds, getting it back on my size one needle, and then that's where I begin my decreases, and you can find information on how to make an afterthought heel. It's basically the same as the toe, in terms of the way you're increasing, that's how you decrease. So I hope this video has helped you just with the steps. And if you have any other questions, feel free to just go ahead and ask them in the comments section below or on the Treehouse Knits podcast Ravelry group. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I hope those videos were helpful to you. Um, one thing I wanted to point out before we close is this great book by Lara Neal called Sock Architecture. In it, you will find all different types of toes and, and cuffs and heels um, that you can use. And I have found that I really like the rounded toe in this book. I, it doesn't come spiral bound. I got it spiral bound because I like to do that when I know I'm going to be using a book to reference. But the cool thing about this book is there's um, choose from 17 different sock patterns or you can just design your own socks using the different heels and toes and, and cuffs in here. So highly recommend this book for your knitting library. And then I just also wanted to point out that on Ravelry, I do have a free pattern that is actually a nine inch circular um, knitting pattern that I wrote out. Um, because when you use the nine inch circulars, it's really nice to be able to just go ahead and knit the tube and then deal with the heel at the end. So that particular pattern is, I believe, called uh, socks on nine inch circulars with an afterthought heel. And it, and it just verbally kind of says how I put my heels in. So I think that's it. I mean, the main re one of the main reasons I love to knit the socks toe up and, and then into a tube as well is because it keeps all of the stripes straight in your socks. It just keeps them even. And there's that final sock that you saw in the video that I was working on. So I thought, I hope that that video was helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. If you can give me a thumbs up, then I'll know that you like these kind of videos and I will make more in the future. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next podcast. Bye.